Good evening, everybody. My name is Levi Clay, and this evening we are going to do something something fun. We're going to look at an interesting book. Yeah? Yeah? Look at that. And we are going to be learning, learning how to use MuseScore. Now, I should be super clear. This is not a tutorial. This is absolutely not me teaching you how to use MuseScore. No, no, no. This is me learning how to use MuseScore. And the reason I've decided to do this is, well, I'm going to be doing, talk more about some upcoming transcriptions that I'm going to be doing here on YouTube. Um, but the reason I'm doing this is, uh, doing it this way, is because I want you to understand that there is always time in your lives, professionally or leisure-wise, to learn new things, okay? And just because I make my career, make my living out of music, it doesn't mean that I'm not also learning, okay? When you see me use Guitar Pro, I'm sure it can come across as very intimidating, the speed and fluency with which I use the software, right? But I want you to understand that learning to use Guitar Pro, just like learning to use MuseScore, is something that you can all achieve. You can all go out and do this. There's nothing that would stop you doing this. So I'm going to try and apply how I learned Guitar Pro to learning to use MuseScore, talk more about MuseScore in a second and in order to do that I'm going to be inputting that'll be the first thing I'll be doing before I do transcription work I'm going to be inputting music from this Pokemon book so that is my plan this evening learning learning to use MuseScore not teaching you how to use MuseScore but learning how to use MuseScore and if you are familiar with MuseScore uh, absolutely fantastic to have you in the comment section because your input may help you may be able to help me see things see solutions to problems that I, I see on screen uh, that I'm unable to see because of course I'm not going to go and look for tutorials in doing this I'm not going to be looking for tutorials uh, I'm going to figure out how to use the software and have fun learn the ins and outs of how it all works so that should be fun uh, Richard asks how are you finding the left hand on the piano it feels super weird to me when I play um, yeah man uh, if you saw the video I put up of me playing one of the Pokemon tunes today uh, the left hand part in that is a, an alternating arpeggio pattern low note high note middle note high note and i had to spend a day just programming that motion in of alternating between that and not playing it as a straight up and down arpeggio um which yeah it took it took some time but i mean think of it this way richard as a guitar player i use my left hand on the fretboard so i have good dexterity in this hand um sure my right hand is my dominant hand but I definitely have the dexterity in my left hand. So there's nothing, uh, no reason I, I shouldn't be able to do this. Really, we should be talking to Peter, uh, Peter Rowan, about playing the piano. He's a phenomenal piano player. Uh, even more disgusting when you consider his age. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, it, don't get me wrong. It's, you know, it's been a challenge. I would say, uh, okay, let me put it this way. I certainly wouldn't say playing anything with the left hand is a challenge. Playing with the left hand is fine, but independence between the left hand and the right hand is difficult, especially when those two hands are doing different things, right? Um, so when I'm working through something like the Hannon exercises, they're not too bad. There's slight discrepancies between the hand. As you start moving on to playing scales in left and right hand at the same time, you know, they're, they're doing the same notes, but different fingering patterns as they're going. Um, it's a good finger independence exercise and those are you know reasonably challenging but when you move into the world of having your left hand do something and your right hand doing something totally different uh, that's a lot harder and I think the brain is conditioned to concentrate on your dominant hand or, or to f have a little bit more focus on it so um, yeah it, it's definitely you know programming in the mind work in order to do it um, but fun really, really fun so uh, Jose says, wow, I didn't know this book. Is it official? Where can I buy it? It is an official book. It is an official book. This is the Pocket Monsters uh, original soundtrack. So this is um, the the publisher is Doremi Publishing. They are a Japanese publisher. They do a lot of, or certainly in, back in the day, they did a lot of really cool books. When I was growing up, I had all the Racer X tab books and Paul Gilbert solo album tab books and Extreme stuff and Mr. Big stuff. And that was all Japanese band score stuff, Doremi Publishing. So um, it is an official book. It does exist. You can find it. Uh, they're on eBay, f you know, f a few copies of it. You'll need to import it from Japan. You're probably looking at like $140 to get your hands on a copy. Uh, because it would have been published in 1995, I would assume. I'm looking for uh, some sort of date on here. Let me see. 
1998 it was published. Uh, yeah, from what I can gather. Obviously, the, the game came out in Japan in 1995. Uh, so this was published in 1998. So uh, there will be copies lying around. And um, yeah, I imported it from Japan. I just paid, you know, what it cost. Uh, far too much for what it is. But it's a really cool book. Um, so I will come back and talk about this in two seconds. I just need to run my credits. So as always, a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters over on Patreon. I would not be able to do these videos without your love, kindness and support. Certainly wouldn't be able to continue doing this for a living. So uh, your support is very much appreciated. If you would like to go and check me out on Patreon, link is in the description, I think. I assume the link is in the description. <laughs> I didn't think that far ahead. Uh, but default, the link should be in the description. So please do consider checking me out there and you can support the channel for as little as $1. It is an absolutely massive help and you get lots of cool stuff in return. If that doesn't suit, alternatively, you can head on over to Amazon, check out one of my books. I have several available. I need to, I've, um, the plan is to take a month off next month so I can get writing on my next book because I've not written a book in 18 months. So new book will be coming. Thank you very much one more time for your love, kindness and support. It is very much appreciated. So let's talk about this book. So yeah, I picked this up because as uh, Richard has kind of commented on, I'm learning to play the piano now. I'm taking it extremely seriously. I'm practicing for hours a day and I'm having a great time doing it. Uh, and in doing that, I have had to really, how would I put this? I've had to really question uh, what it is that I want to do. Like, why am I doing this? What is my goal? Because j just like... Um, learning to play the guitar, learning to play the piano means lots of different things to lots of different people, okay? I have almost no interest in playing classical piano, okay? The main focus is my girlfriend, Melissa. She is a fantastic singer. She's an incredible songwriter, and she's a reasonable piano player. She writes a lot of her stuff at the piano, and uh, aside from touring with her band... Melissa Kelly and the Smoking Crows um, she's wanting to go out and tour her solo stuff and that would be a lot more intimate that would be guitar and voice piano and voice type thing so for me it's a useful skill to be able to accompany her on, on the piano now that approach accompanying a singer is a very different approach to the classical approach to playing piano right so on the one hand that's what I want to do on the other hand I do I have to ask myself like what piano music do I love what piano music do I enjoy and I'm not it's been a long time since I've done the classical thing because of obviously like I, I talk about like a classical education I had what you consider to be a classical education in music um, but I was never passionate about it so I had to think to myself well what piano music is cool and I just come back I remember being like 15 and there being uh, I know I knew a guy at the time who was uh, re relatively new to the piano but he'd taken everything really seriously and I just walked past one of the practice rooms one day and he was playing music from Final Fantasy on piano and I was you know just grabbed because that's music that speaks to me because uh, I grew up on that type of stuff and that got me thinking well I love video game music I've always loved video game music so what I'm doing is I am learning um, I'm learning to accompany singers I'm buying as many video game piano books as humanly possible they are hard to come by, as you can guess from this, um, uh, because it's a nostalgia trip. But of course, the other way, the other thing that I find fascinating about the piano or find fascinating about music in general is different styles of music. So I am taking an interest in the history of the piano. You know, I love the idea of being able to play some stride piano. Uh, you, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could play... Um, I just saw the Elton John comment there. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I could play like Art Tatum stuff? Of course, that's not going to happen. Um, but if I could play Art Tatum stuff, that would be incredible. Um, if I could like bebop comping, um, like piano comping stuff, uh, I'm just trying to expand my mind a little bit more, improve my ear, be able to hear harmony in a better way. And piano is wonderful for that. And um, yeah, Elton John, uh, classical education. Elton's a great, great piano player. <laughs> Uh, and I'm really coming to appreciate that now the more I play piano. So anyway, let's talk about this book. So this is the soundtrack to the original Pokemon games. Uh, when these were released in Japan initially, they're, of course they weren't called Pokemon, they were called Pocket Monsters. The original games in Japan were Pokemon or Pocket Monsters Red and Pocket Monsters Green. So Red and Green were released in Japan first in 95, and then... Uh, 
I believe it was the next year, they adapted those two and turned those into the blue version. Around that time, they came over to the, uh, I won't say Europe, but let's say the West, because I'm, I'm not sure where you all are watching from. Um, and we got Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. They were heavily based on the source code for the Japanese Pokemon Blue, and then at a later point, Pokemon Yellow came out. But in essence, the soundtrack to those games was fundamentally the same thing. So it's presented here in the Pocket Monsters original soundtrack. And it's a really cool book. It is a really cool book, to be honest. Um, there's some artwork in here, which is nice. Uh, I'm just trying to open it for you. Some pictures of Pokemon, of course, because ultimately, let's not pretend this was anything other than a kid's book. <laughs> uh, in fact, it's, it's just all of the Pokemon. Yeah, I say all. I was going to say all of the Pokemon, but there's more Pokemon than this. But there aren't. There's 151 Pokemon in here, and that's all there is. So, <laughs> um, I don't even know what that is in the uh, thumbnail on the sight reading vid. To be honest, Peter. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so when it comes to the arrangements in this book, they are pretty simple. Pretty simple. Because again, they're kids. They're kids' arrangements. There's, these are for kids to play. So you've got simple parts in the left hand, simple parts in the right hand. This is what I've been working on for the last couple of days. This is the... Um, I mean, I'll play you in a second. But this is... Uh, hang on, I've got it. I do have it listed here. Because, of course, it's written in Japan, right? So this is the, uh, that's Oak Research Lab. You know that nice melody uh, and the alternating pattern in the in the bass hand, uh, in the left hand. Very basic arrangements. Very very basic arrangements. And I and I thought that um, this would be a nice place to start with learning musical, uh, because I'll just input the notes. And this, of course, is one of the important things that I always recommend when people are learning to use Guitar Pro. Step one is input. You have to learn how to input in the software. So just taking a tab book that you already have and just inputting it in Guitar Pro to get familiar with how that all works. So I'm going to apply the exact same logic here. I'm just going to do some input in musical. Simple concept. Shouldn't be difficult. Um, the thing I will point out about some of these arrangements, uh, though, is the Game Boy, because, of course, this was released on the Game Boy, had a limited uh, sound uh, range had limited range so you find the the voicings in these are very clustered and close together um for example if i bring this up the piece that i've been working on if you look at that bass part it's right right up there in the top ledger lines realistically i can't help but look at that and say well why have you not just written that left hand in treble clef <laughs> um because it is unreasonably high but of course I assume that the logic is, well, this is a book for kids. Let's not confuse them by making them, you know, consider that sometimes we would use different clefs for things. Um, it could probably be a little bit neater. And again, that's something I'm probably going to toy around with in music score. Let me read some of these uh, read some of these comments. So do you think piano is uh, more complete than guitar? Sometimes I get frustrated with guitar, like when I try to play some different voicings, closed voicings with clusters, just uh, digitation. So it... <sighs> I mean, yeah, of course, it's more complete than guitar. Uh, a pianist has 10 fingers, 88 keys, and uh, they can, you know, they have a lot of range in terms of what they're able to play at one time. They can play a lot of notes spread out reasonably far. That doesn't mean to say that it's in some way better than the guitar. It's just different from the guitar because while you point out things like clusters, which are extremely easy to execute on the piano, uh, you know, stacked fifths are are reasonably difficult to execute on the piano compared to how easy they are on the guitar because i would argue that clusters i play a lot of cluster voicings on the guitar i wouldn't argue that they're difficult because i studied them right and it's the same like fifth cluster not clusters, stacked fifth voicings on on the piano are just you know going to be harder for someone to play than they are on the guitar so it's yeah different um my mindset on the guitar has always been very piano like uh in the terms of the way that i think of harmony in terms of the way that I teach chords to my students in terms of the way I think about you know voices voice leading etc so that you know that kind of thing I've taken to to it really uh, effectively with but I yeah I wouldn't say more complete it just depends on what you're into I think if you look at uh, guys like Charlie Hunter I'm really 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 wanting to get one of his hybrid guitars I think they're super fucking cool um, I want one of those things so damn much because it kind of answers some of that range issue gives you a little bit more range which i think is a really cool 
Um, but yeah, <laughs> let's let's say for argument's sake that the piano is a more complete instrument, but the guitar's a cooler instrument. So, <laughs> um, so Ricardo says I would just spam the people around me with a lavender town theme. Yeah, lavender lavender town theme is uh, a beautiful, beautiful theme. Uh, do I regret having learned the guitar instead of piano in the first place? Sorry for my bad English. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I learned guitar for all the wrong reasons. I learned guitar to, uh, to, how do I put this? Uh, I learned the guitar because of a girl. <laughs> and I am not with that girl anymore, but I was with that girl. And, uh, that was probably thanks to the guitar. So based on that, <laughs> the guitar hasn't done me bad. Um, do I wish that I took guitar, uh, sorry, piano more seriously when I was younger? Because of course I talk about like a classical education. I wouldn't say that I'm classically trained because in that sense, I'm, I'm not, I came to music relatively late in life. Uh, it was like around four, age of 14, but it was via, uh, music classes in school. And that was very much classical, uh, in terms of nature. We were analyzing classical music. And then when I went, I did my GCSEs and A-levels, uh, I did A levels in both music and music technology, but the music side of things was very much classical uh, composition and the study of, uh, you know, all, all of the types of things you do in that Bach chorales and counterpoint and learning the ins and outs of the history, the the way that classical musicians study. And I was playing classical guitar at the time, so um, yeah, I, I obviously piano was something that we were encouraged to have a reasonable level of skill on and it was something that I wasn't interested in practicing so I just did what I could in order to get by um and yeah Dan, of course I said it Michael <laughs> you, do I strike you as a liar no I say what I think I say what I mean I, I believe in saying what you mean and meaning what you say so uh yeah I wish that I had taken the uh piano the harmony side of things more seriously um because it was just cutting off my nose to spite my face really <laughs> everybody should have basic skills on the piano uh because it's a very useful way to teach certain aspects of music it's uh while the guitar is an extremely visual instrument don't get me wrong extre extremely visual there are certain aspects of theory that using a piano to teach a student is much more effective in terms of the way it's laid out it's much clearer than doing things on the guitar so um yeah uh speaking of input curious about your thoughts on the lily pond uh i don't know what that is hang on <laughs> hang on yeah i'm not i don't know what that is Sorry, Yvor. <laughs> um, <laughs> difficult sheet music was exactly what I typed into Google, mate. <laughs> uh, aren't you learning piano for almost the same reason now? Or at least approach to piano? <laughs> Ricardo, you might be onto something there, mate. You might be onto something there. <laughs> it's a... Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting, a little, 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 interesting take on things. I mean, no, because despite, um, like, don't get me wrong, it's definitely an, an influence, definitely a reason there. Uh, but despite only really taking piano more seriously now, it's not like it's not something that I've been meaning to get round to. It's not like I haven't got a nice keyboard here uh, in my studio. And, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing arrangements of tunes for people or recording or whatever it happens to be um sometimes i like actually here's a great example so if you go back and look i've done lots of videos in the past like soloing school videos where i have me playing the guitar and there's keyboard playing behind it like padding out the chords and that's a pain in the ass for me to do in post because my piano skills aren't where i want them to be or where i need them to be so stuff like that takes me a lot longer than it, than it needs to do and i would like to just be able to knock stuff like that out really really quickly so <laughs> um yeah so one of the things i feel more pissed off is uh easy to have melody and harmony at the same time yeah yeah like i said different different instruments all right minus seven sharp five muse score is i'll get onto that and give me like one minute and i'll we'll talk about muse score so uh durations first then pitches uh by keyboard and midi keyboard for lily pond still not 100 percent sure what you're talking about mate but 
<laughs> I mean, kind of durations first, then pictures. Like keyboard, or music, or you know, maybe. Uh, yes. Pat Start learned piano too. Got a student who was a master's teacher's piano. Probably going to trade lessons. Yeah, do it, man. Do it. Um, I think that's a super chat, but I don't know from Eric. Uh, <laughs> dude, Facebook me. We'll talk about it. You, uh, you've all <laughs> your videos get me to start transcribing. Thanks for making content, bro. You're very welcome, Matt. Okay, so let's talk. Let's talk. Uh, musical. Uh, hey, whoa. Let's just go here. TGS. Am I already abandoning Guitar Pro? You cannot say already. I have used Guitar Pro professionally every single day of my life from right around when six Guitar Pro 6 came out, I was using it. Uh, I have worked for the company. I have, you know, provided certain my transcription services for Aerobus Music. I have done live streams for Aerobus Music going back over a decade. I've used their software and I will continue to use their software, even though I hate it. I, I use it because it's fast. Uh, but MuseScore serves a slightly different purpose. So let's talk about MuseScore. What is MuseScore? Uh, worth pointing out, this video is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. It's uh, it's just relevant, right? So MuseScore, MuseScore is a free piece of notation software. Uh, it is, as you can see here, completely free, no limitations. It's open source, professional music notation software, input via MIDI keyboard, easy to use yet powerful, and transfer to and from other pro programs. Uh, yeah, right for, you know, piano, guitar, orchestra, jazz, choir, band, marching, and much more. And it's open source, and it's free. So there's really no reason to not have it. There, of course, are competitors on the market for notation software. You've got things like uh, Sibelius, of course. I grew up using Sibelius, which I found to be a painfully slow program. That's why I moved away from it. And, of course, Sibelius is very classical in nature, and that doesn't lend itself very well to modern guitar stuff, if that makes sense. Uh, tablature and like the more advanced side of notation though of course it's got a lot better there are competitors like dorico uh and but ultimately the reason i don't like those is if you look at something like sibelius you can either buy the software for hundreds and hundreds of dollars or you can pay a monthly subscription fee to be able to use it guitar pro is literally 10 times cheaper than all of these things which is the main reason i'm using it it's cheap it's effective and when i provide a transcription for a client i can then say to them well, you can play this transcription in Guitar Pro, you know, I, and that's something that's very, very useful, um, the interactive side of things. But yeah, MuseScore, uh, MuseScore isn't that. MuseScore gives you um, access to really everything, um, and it's 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 pretty cool, you know. I've I've honestly I used it for maybe twenty minutes before doing this stream, just so I wasn't going to make a complete ass of myself, just so I had the basic layout of the software, how the layout wo uh, worked. Wouldn't say I'm an expert of it in any way, shape, or form. I mean, you, I mean, you're gonna see that almost immediately, right? So, <laughs> uh, did I try Sibelius or more professional scoring software? Yeah, uh, like I say, I used Sibelius um, all through music school. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, right from the start of my education, from 14, I was using Sibelius three, maybe Sibelius three, uh, <laughs> and then all through college, I was using Sibelius. When I went to music school, I was using Sibelius. And then when I came out, I just, it's, it's just no good for, if I do a, like, Ariel Posen's transcriptions for his album, it's fine, I could do them all in Sibelius, but then he can only sell PDFs, whereas now he can sell PDFs and guitar profiles, and guitar profiles are, are useful to, to the end user, so... You've all, you've got, like, a fascinating, um fascination or, or passion for the, like the early music type thing i find that really interesting <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah sibelius is a mess of an app too anyway so let's take a look at a uh, musical so i have it open here um this is you know for anyone that's used any sort of uh notation software this will be a familiar look for you in fact i just need to uh change the layout of this a little bit just so you can see Normally I have my screen a little bit reduced so you uh, don't get the excess stuff around the edge. But in this instance, I want you to be able to see the full window. So uh, where did that thing go? It's over here. So when I open up a score in uh, MuseScore, the start center, I'm going to create a new score. And uh, <laughs> I tell you what, let's have a quick listen to the thing that we're going to be transcribing. Okay. So I've got the uh, the official the Pokemon soundtrack here. 
Um, the thing we're going to listen to is the Oak Research Lab, so it's this. So Oak Research Lab is the name of the piece. Hopefully there's a bit of nostalgia for that. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to put in the, the title, Oak uh, I can't read. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess I could put the composer in. Who composed the Pokemon soundtrack? That's embarrassing, isn't it? I can't remember. I'll put all that in at a later point. <laughs> uh, I'm going to click on Next. And yeah, I'm just deciding, you know, your, your typical thing, what instruments do you need on this? Uh, I am going to go under, I mean, if, if I put the great stuff, will it just give me what I want there? I mean, it should do, right? Um, and key signature, uh, this key is key of A. 4-4, four, four, yeah, fantastic. There is an Anacrusis, a pickup bar, but these are all sorts of things that I, actually, to be honest with you, I don't want to... Um, I don't want to put things like that in at the start because I don't know. I might be using this from a compositional standpoint. It, it totally depends on you know what I what I end up doing, right? Uh, this is three point six, yeah. Really user friendly as a composer, technologically illiterate fud. I refuse to believe Peter that you're technologically illiterate, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, this is proper nostalgia, right? I transcribe uh, directly onto Guitar Pro, um, 92 uh, point care. That's, you know, how I do things. <laughs> yeah, so, um, okay. So now I've put that in, um, this is my, my grand stuff. And the the only understanding that I have of how MuseScore works currently is, and I, I already have criticisms of this, up here, this is no input mode. So when I click this button, I'm now inputting notes. Okay. You, there is, and this is the, the recommendation I always give when I'm learning, or when I'm telling people how to learn Guitar Pro, is to hover over all of your icons so you know what they are and ideally learn the shortcuts for them. Right. So when I look at this, it says N in order to enter notes with a mouse or keyboard. So rather than having to go up and click this, I know that I can press N and that's going to take me in and out of no input mode. Okay. Uh, you have your note values in terms of the lengths of notes. I feel these are maybe the wrong way. Two, three, four, five, six, seven for a whole note. Should be the other way around. A whole note should be one. <laughs> a half note should be two. A quarter note should be three. So on and so forth. That makes more sense to me. But, you know, fine. There may be a way in, you know, in, in the deep, dark reaches of the software of how to change all of these um, shortcuts. That would make sense. Um, but, yeah. We want to know those. So if I need to input notes, I can press N. I can go over here. I'll be able to click where I want to put my notes. And I can change the note value by pressing the relevant number keys. And stuff like that is much more efficient in terms of your time than constantly having to go back up here and click on things. So you absolutely want to get familiar with that. This will be a uh, yeah an augmentation dot, which is the full stop. This will be our tie, which is plus. Rest will be R, I would assume. You would assume, wouldn't you? Let's just test that. It'd be very strange if it's not. Put in a couple of notes, right? Uh, so put it out. Of so if I go, I'm just using my arrow keys to hover between, to switch between notes. If I press rest. No, it doesn't. Okay. That's strange. That's really strange. Uh, and I don't like that. I don't want to have to come up here and click on rest in order to turn something into a rest. There should be a more efficient way of doing that. I'm sure there is one. I just haven't found out what it is yet. <laughs> um, sharps and flats. Yeah, so no naturals, flats. Flip direction with X and then voices. Uh, so this is basic. I assume if I click advanced. Yeah, if I click click advanced, it gives me a few more options. So we've got whole notes and then we've got our briefs. Yeah, or the double whole note and the longer. Uh, you know, un unnecessary amounts of dots and things and the like. But, you know. It does does the job so um uh, if you have the money <laughs> if i have the money speaking of if i have the money 
Have you considered support? <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. <laughs> um, right. So immediately when I, in the, you know, 10 minutes that I did try the software out just to make sure I would be able to work things out, I'm just going to open the Pokemon book so I can see it here like this. Reading it is good. My first thought is, one, two, three, four. Why are there about 25 million um, <laughs> million bars on each of these lines, right? Uh, so my first thought is like, well, I need to change this layout. This needs to be improved. I don't like the way this is. Uh, you've all says rest is zero. Why would it not tell me that? Let's let's test that. So N to bring up notes. Let's put in a few notes. Um, let's say I want to, I don't want this note if I press zero. Yeah, see, I like you, Yavor. And that, <laughs> well, and obviously everyone knows I like you. But, you know, why when I hover over rest, does it not give me that information? It should tell me zero is, is rest, right? <laughs> um, like I say, I'm sure the goal is I will be able to find this information. But, oh, did not mean to do that. Okay, so uh, so I assume that means control and delete will delete a bar. Yeah, control and delete is deleting a bar. Kind of what you'd expect. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> I'm going to bring my face up for this, actually. So the main issue I have with Guitar Pro is that Guitar Pro is not an engraving software. Okay, Guitar Pro is a guitar playback piece of software. And it's designed by people that don't understand or appreciate how notation works, the way things should look. So you are you are extremely limited in terms of what you can do in terms of the design, the layout, the way notes look in Guitar Pro. MuseScore should give me a lot more options in terms of that. I should have a lot more control over the way things look, right? Uh, deleting the note would make it a rest as well, yeah. Um, so in this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have all of those options. And because of that, I should be able to click on just about anything in the score, right? And I miss, yeah, see, I miss total assumptions, right? But because this is a score writing piece of software, um, this is a uh, control Z to undo that there. Uh, because this is an engraving piece of software, essentially, I have the ability to, to make, to put these things where I want. So, uh, okay, I can't move the key, can't move the clef, but I can move the time signature. That's interesting. Um, bar lines. I can't move the bar lines left and right, but I know that if I press enter on a bar line, <laughs> it will give me, uh, it's going to give me four four measures per line. And I would like to think, oh no. So control, no, shift, no. There has to be a way to reduce this space. If I wanted to drag that up, why can I not drag that up? Control, alt maybe, no. Okay, so shift and click makes me highlight lots of things, which is nice. Maybe if I highlight all of that. Yeah, no, I can't I can't move that. So Yavor, help me out, mate. How do I move the <laughs> how do I move that up and down? Uh help me out, Yavor. That'll that'd be appreciated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna input this melody. So the ba da 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 This should be extremely easy. Extremely easy. I'm going to press note, N for note. Um, I, I am actually going to go up here and click my augmentation dot because I've not really thought about that yet. Um, did I? Is it just me or did I not hear that? And uh, when I do this in Guitar Pro, I'm so familiar with what my um, what my shortcuts are for this. Uh, so full stop on that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, now we are going to press this. And is there a doesn't seem to be a shortcut for sharp, but that's fine. Uh, yeah. Now it would need to be a rest. Okay, so I can kind of see the reason why I wouldn't need to. Why I wouldn't need to put uh, be, have to press rest because unlike Guitar Pro, I'm actually using my mouse and arrows to click where I want to put the notes, so I can actually just move past the rest rather than having to press right. Uh, star spacing in layout, layouts, layout last though. Yeah, okay, I guess that make, makes sense. Um, can you input using note names? I believe you can. So if we're here, uh, if I press E, yeah, that will work. Um, I just don't think that would be efficient in terms of, you know, where all those, where is A, B, C, D, E, F, and G on the keyboard versus me just being able to click like this. Really, I wanted to set up um, a camera pointing at my hand here, but my other camera's playing up. 
what I'm doing to, in order to input that is I have my left hand just sat on the top of the number pad so I can press the button I need in, up here. Uh, I'm just pressing the buttons in my number pad in order to select what I want. And then I'm using my right hand in order to, to input notes. And I think this is like a more than efficient way of doing things for me at this stage. So, uh, so let's continue on. So we'll have our F sharp and it's actually a dotted note. So if I do that, okay, so I'd have to, yeah, okay, so I can just press the note twice, which is fine. Then uh, we've got 16th notes playing E, then a D. Uh, then we've going back to a dotted quarter note playing, uh, or the C sharp, should probably be more accurate in terms of the note names. Uh, B and then a C sharp. Oh, then we're going up to a D. There's a rest, and then we are dropping down to an A C sharp. Uh, repeat the C sharp, but as a quarter note. Okay, so now I should be able to press play on that. Oh, yeah, see, look, just being able to really lay things out the way I want it to look. You don't have this level of control in Guitar Pro. I don't like what I've done there though, so I want it auto laid out. <laughs> Um, so immediately, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy with my, my options here, <laughs> the way I can go about doing this. Uh, let me check this. So now it's last. Yeah. So I'm just called, you've always not, you should absolutely get in the discord, brother. It's, um, yeah. Uh, you can input notes from a MIDI connection with a keyboard and that is a very fair point. Um, why don't I try doing that? So I'm just going to move my guitar out of the way so I can pull my my tray out my tray with my keyboard on so um how would this work so if i go to input my left hand part uh i know i'm gonna want eighth notes okay now if i press that's the note i want but it's not automatically it's very quiet isn't it i wonder if there's a hang on uh Oh, how do I bring up my mixer? View. Mixer. This is what I need to write in. So, um, that's the note that I want to play. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure at this stage when I play this on my keyboard. Um, when I play that on the keyboard, it's not inputting it. So yes, <laughs> don't worry. I'm sure there is a way to do that, but at this stage, I'm just getting familiar with input by clicking. So. <laughs> um, I mean, I certainly, you would definitely be able to do this, right? So uh, you've got play here. Start, stop. Toggle, loop, playback. Rewind to start position. Um, yeah, there's no, we'd expect there to be some sort of record button. Sub menu on the button for the note input with options. That'd be here, right? I see real time manual, maybe. Okay, uh, so when I do that, it's not staying there. <laughs> uh, okay, that's interesting. Well, that's really strange. <laughs> um, uh, let's delete all of that. It's still cool. Like right? it's still, I, I like this kind of uh, learning rhythm. Okay, so would that mean? Okay. Yep. Yeah, so I've got that. <laughs> so in theory. If I delete all this now, and I'm sure there'll be a faster way of doing this, 
but I would imagine now I should be able to just play bastard oh, I need to put the note mode in right so Okay, cool. So you've all said um, layout at the end. <laughs> and I I don't really work like that. Uh, did I almost play the lick there? <laughs> uh, I mean, I kind of broke my own rule, right? I really, I should be going through up here and looking at, um, you know, absolutely everything. And I, I have found in the the very brief little bit of um, experimentation I've done with the software already, the reason I'm really, really impressed with this software, actually, is when I'm looking at this, I know I can right-click and go into Piano Roll Editor. And now in Piano Roll, I have the ability to adjust the notes in terms of how the midi will play them back and this is of course for me the biggest the biggest issue with guitar pro you should be able to have it look one way but have it play the way you need it to play the way you want it to to sound right so if for some reason when i'm looking at this bass clef part down here uh there we go if I wanted these notes to ring out a little bit longer than they actually should, right? I know I can highlight all of these. Go down here under duration, of course, because it's duration. And I can just... Oh, no. Why did it not do all of them? Well, you can see I'm changing the, the length of that note, right? But I'm not changing the length in the, uh, in the score. So it's not changing the actual value. So I could have this play back the way I really want it to. I can have it you know, the exact length that the MIDI would expect it to play, but it won't change the graphical interface. And that's a really fucking nice touch. You can do note durations, you can change velocities. I'm not entirely sure what position is. Let's get a look at that. No, that doesn't... Oh, okay, so that that's... Yeah, okay, position is time, is timing. So I can move up and down with that, and it will change how late the note is played so in theory you should be able to make your scores play back exactly like you the way you want them to they should sound good and that's a really fucking nice touch i have a lot of appreciation for that so uh levi what does my hair look like when you don't wear headphones that's a good question let's let's have a look i have an undercut right now um, still need to, I need to shave the side of my head again. Looking around for a hair tie. Have I got a hair tie to hand? Normally I'd have my hair tied up. So. If I want to go turbo emo, I can, you know, the whole. Exactly, yeah, you can humanise your score, which is a nice touch, nice touch. <laughs> Quintuplet swing bridge, here we go, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you want to edit a set of quarter notes, go into the top insertion mode, looks like an N, and you can either enter a letter on the keyboard or by MIDI. Um, yeah, thank you for that, David. <laughs> uh, looks like an N, okay. I mean, I assume, I assume you're talking talking uh talking that right you know i've i've no issue with that I, i've already done that mate i know how that works um yeah so the this piano roll thing i think is fan fucking tastic absolutely fantastic this is a massive massive um pro for me um of the software i think excellent option absolutely love it um and that gives us a lot of potential right so now uh if i take it out of note input mode should be able to just hit play on this and we'll get so 
sounds the way I would want it to, right? And to me, there's absolutely no denying that that's going to be faster than me inputting the notes. Um, uh, I've put input those faster than I would do by clicking in Guitar Pro. Uh, the thing I don't like is, let me get my mixer. F10 for mixer, I should learn that, right? Uh, I don't like the how quiet the, the piano actually is. So, yeah. Uh, and I also can't... Like, it'd be nice to have an actual record thing because I know that when I go up here and go... Uh, I assume rhythm... Uh, when I go down here and I input the rest of the this bass part... Uh, so what have we got? Bass part, played the F sharp minor. I should, should be looking at the notation, really, shouldn't I? Uh, okay, we're going down to uh, yeah D major part. So uh, I should be able to click N, and now I should just be able to put this in by going... Here's the, here's the problem because the next part I have to play is quarter notes. So, am I going to need to click? I would like to think there'll be a, a smarter way of me doing that. Uh, but still, that is a really nice touch being able to do that. Uh, the reason I wanted to point that is because inputting a long stream of eighth note, sorry. Sorted you. <laughs> Let me do that again. Whoop. So, uh, up here, eighth notes. If I play this part in, so. Now's when the note value changes. So, I would need to, uh, at this stage, do that in order to get my uh, note value in and that's um there must be a smart way of doing that like realistically I've yet to see like a, a record button so let me try this um yeah it doesn't give me a count in yeah no count in so i absolutely confident there will be a way for me to um hit hit play there is one mode uh try to guess the note duration as well yeah so th there is this um real time thing and the notes while tapping a key or pedal to set the tempo which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me if i'm honest and the notes at a fixed tempo indicated by a metronome beat so you know um i wonder what happens when we try that because that could be nice if we can get that to work but you know how do i get this metronome beat to i want to be able to hear this metronome beat right Oh, I, I imagine I'd need to have the um, have the mode selected, right? And then surely, okay. So now that doesn't give me the playback option that I would want. One, two, three. Of course, I've not dealt in tempo yet. So, uh, so if I go here. played with the right hand actually but you know I'll, I'll just do it here so <laughs> uh if i put it in like this two three four okay so that's not giving me giving me what i want there i want <laughs> i want to just be able to play the part in it to, to go in uh there must be a smart way of doing that must there must be a smart way of doing that but like i say I'll toy around with that. There's no reason for you guys to, to watch me learn how to do that. Um, <laughs> I'm really, you know, baby steps, baby steps for this. There is something that I do want to play around with. So, okay, I've got the I've got that input. Let's put the, the second part of this melody in. Uh, so I'm going to take it out of that mode. I'm just going to go on step time, which is the default. 
uh, and I will put things in like this. So, and then, oh, we're changing our rhythm to, we're playing uh, A, D, then we're jumping up to a minim, F sharp, uh, then we're jumping down to an E, which is uh, a dotted note. I have confidence in this that with time that you would get quite effective at this and um, I can absolutely see the potential here for this to be considerably faster than Guitar Pro. I mean, talk, especially talking about inputting piano. And I think that's the thing to consider, right? When I'm doing this now, um, everything I'm inputting here is piano. <laughs> and the piano, when you look at the piano, there's only one way to play everything, right? All of my notes, you know, they only ex exist in one place. Doing this for guitar would be a lot more difficult. Okay. Uh, believe it or not, that's the entirety of the piece. So let's put it out of that. Okay. So with that, let's take a quick listen. Does the job, right? Uh, so with that done, I should now be able to... So you're always talking about layout, right? So let's take a look at this layout thing. So format, I would imagine. Nope. There's a lot of, lot of interesting options in here, which is kind of cool. Obviously you can use your own plugins, which is nice. Uh, oh, what's this? Add intervals. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's cool. That will come in handy for writing things. Tuplets, adding bars, frames, text, lines. Uh, right, where the hell is layout? Or am I missing something? Uh, yeah, lines. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yavor, help me, help me, somebody help me, how do I lay out? Okay, got it there. Uh, now what I want is... I want to, I don't like these gaps here at the start. I, I know it's tradition to have it, but I don't like it. <laughs> um, so I would really like to change that. And I would like to know how, if I wanted to, to have more, like, do that note. What I want to currently do is I want to work out how to put this measure up here. I want to see four measures on that top line. And it doesn't seem to be an obvious way for me to do that. That's... Okay, so we've got edit elements and things like that. It's not giving me any information on that when I click edit element, which is fantastic. Oh, this was the inevitable thing that I thought was going to happen when I did this. Um, okay, so let's deal in other things. Of course, I need to put text in on these things. So, uh, oh, right. Do we want that? No, I don't want to change instrument. I want chords. Guess you'd just be making the decision to use this right um so yeah so this is this is exactly what you want when you compare this to oh how do i okay so it's yeah it's connected to this piece of information which is fine that's how you do things in sibelius i will read all your comments in a second guys um so i'm just going to put harmony in on this because that's important right so this is an uh a over c shop
and I would imagine if I copy paste now I should just be able to do uh, F sharp minor over A sweet then this will be a D this will be an uh, A over E that's fine E over B This is a D6, or at least that's what they put it in the book. And then ending on an E. Sweet. Right, let me, uh, I'm going to read through some of these comments. Uh, Lucas Mann's response we read from a while ago. Will ever make a follow up? I I did a I did a follow up, Neil. I I did a live stream immediately after his um, thing went up, and I pointed out that what he admitted, what he said in his video, confirmed exactly what I had said in my video. Lots of people said that what I said he was doing in his video was miming, that he wasn't playing the guitar, and that wasn't what I said in my video. If you listen very carefully to the words that I use, what I said is what you are seeing and what you are hearing are not the same thing in this video this is not this video that you're watching is not a video of him playing live you can't hear his guitar in this clip and you know that was that was right uh, you couldn't hear his guitar so it, he was so hell-bent on disproving jared dines saying that he was miming that in doing so he confirmed what i had said which was what you were hearing in that video was not him playing live now of course there's nothing wrong with that except he used that video in order to promote his band. He chose that video. He had access to many other videos, but that was the one he chose to use in order to link to sell tickets. Why did he do that? Because he knew people would assume it was him playing. It was misleading. It was fake. Uh, can I set the modulation wheel to control note duration? Uh, I would doubt it because that's assuming you have a modulation wheel. My keyboard has, it doesn't have a, a wheel per se. It has a like a, a touchpad slider type thing. And I, I don't know if I trust that. So, um, yeah. Uh, number bad, Levi Quarter. Yeah. Oh, general page. I'm looking at the chat. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, so that'll be under format. No. View. Tools. So let's fucking find this. Uh, style, gotcha. Oh no, pulls that up. Style. Oh Jesus, okay. Wow, lots of options. Lots and lots of options, which is nice. Nice. Uh, <laughs> okay, page. Um, yeah, this is really this is really good in terms of the, the options that this provides to you compared to um, compared to what Guitar Pro is going to offer. Uh, but not so much that I'd... It's slow. For me, this is slow. Uh, there's way too many options in here for me to even begin to start processing. Like This is an intimidating amount of things to have to look through, right? <laughs> I mean, I like it, don't get me wrong, but um, has anyone anyone got the solution to the problem that I have, which is I want this bar to be up here. <laughs> Oh yeah, so there's a question. Do I have a practice routine on the guitar? Just finished the conservatory this year. Have any instruction? My no, absolutely not, mate. I've played the guitar for twenty years, so I don't have a routine when I pick up and play the guitar. Now I pick up the guitar and I play. <laughs> uh, I almost never uh, practice anything on the guitar anymore. Okay, so um, would it be? Text stars, record diagrams, chord symbols, figured bass, lyrics, save text, formatas. All these options for formatas. Beautiful, beautiful amount of options. Go and get stuff like that in Guitar Pro. <laughs> Pedal, hairpins. It's a beautiful, beautiful amount of options for you in this. 
Look at th look at this. Bar line to grace note distance. Fabulous. Fabulous. I really do believe that you'll be able to do anything you bloody want in this, and this is nice. Uh, but of course, I'm really, really keen on in, uh, software being intuitive, yeah? And there's elements of this that's not as intuitive as I'd like it to be. I should immediately be able to look at this and see this menu and go, I know where it is that I want to go. Uh, you know, there, there are certain things in software, like when I'm looking at this, I know that if I press control and then use the wheel on my mouse, that's going to zoom, right? I know that if I click shift and click something else, it's going to select multiple things. I know that if I click control C and then go down here and press control V, it's going to, you know, it's going to copy and paste. Like these are things that I know how it does. <laughs> Select everything, control A, format system breaks. Select everything. And then we're going to go uh, format. Okay, add, add or remove system breaks. Uh, breaks in. Okay, so if I remove current system breaks. Uh, Yes, yeah, see, it's still only giving me three on this line. The default is to only give me three on this line. I see what that's done. It has, it's kind of, you know, I mean, it has done what I, uh, delete all the excess, zoom out. Um, I want four on here and it should be easy, as easy as me clicking this and dragging it and it doesn't do it. So, um, like the blind leading the blind right so okay uh we'll try it again we'll try it again so we'll go format uh style page bar numbers oh i i'm just going to do that because i know what you're talking about i don't believe that's going to do what you want it to do uh, but we'll give it a go. So, uh, add and remove system breaks. Break system every four bars. Yeah. See, what it what it's doing, the command that it's doing there, is it will, this a system break is this sign here, and that's telling the software to display what comes after this on the next line. So, it's doing that every four bars. So, one, two, three, four, then a system break. This isn't a system break. This is just happening, and I don't want it to do that. <laughs> so I hope you all saw me do that. It didn't do what we wanted it to. Selecting all format, uh, yeah, format, add or remove system breaks, break systems every four bars, and then it's just gonna it's gonna do that. So uh, nope, that's not what I want. I should be able to have, uh, if I wanted, I should be able to have. Uh, oh, there was a lot more there than I thought there was. I should be able to have all of the music, if I wanted to, on one line. Sure, Yavor, but that should be my choice. That It's engraving software. That should be my choice. So I know there must be a way for me to do it. <laughs> there must be a way for me to do it. Because otherwise, I mean, it, it, it puts you in this weird position of compromise, right, where I either have... Th three systems uh, sorry three measures three measures and two measures and i don't like the way that looks because the bottom line looks too spread out or i could have four measures and four measures that would work or i could put the anacrusis in there is an anacrusis to this piece but i'm not i'm not putting it in you know the uh i'm not putting it in the way that you would normally um i'm not putting it because it's not relevant i'm not playing it if that makes sense uh, but that's fine so yeah we can come back to that i wouldn't say it's broken i wouldn't say it's broken uh, but it, it's doing what I would kind of expect it to do, to, to be completely honest with you. Style bar minimum bar width. Let's try this then. So we'll go uh, tools, no, format style, bar, bar, minimum bar width. Okay.
Didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, control A. Let's try that again. Style bar. Yeah, I've, I have I have lowered this. Let's try. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, so it needs to be at one for it to be tight. Uh, so that works. That does the job. <laughs> then I did that and it went back. Uh, right, let's try that again. Okay. Right, so now if I remove that. Okay. This is good. All right, Jake. Yeah, we got there in the end. Um, okay, so how are we removing this indentation? Yavor, you were saying it's under tools, uh, sorry, format style. It should be under here, right? Would it be under page? Uh, page uh, top margin, no, it's not there. File page stave. Yeah, that, that's the the point I'd make. Like, there's a there's a counterintuitive nature uh, nature to doing this, and and that's not what I really want. So, uh, I made this in in MuseScore, Dave. There's no rush before. Um, you know, I'm I'm toying around with this, toying around with this too. So, um, yeah, the other thing that I so I want to get a feel for what these palettes thing on on the left here are. So, as I said, um, when I looked at this, my first thought when I was playing this from from the book is, what you know, would I choose to write this in treble clef? Would I choose to write this in treble clef? So I want to see how easy it is for me to change that clef. So hopefully I should be able to go in here and select a treble clef. And it has just moved that all into treble clef. Now I wouldn't want the whole thing in treble clef. I should point out this is me toying around with how I might go about doing this. So is it as simple as, yeah, okay, so that's, that's quite a nice touch. I uh, shouldn't need it to be in there twice. Now, I'm not saying this is how I do it. This is just me seeing how the software would do its thing. So that's interesting. It's giving me five, five lines on there now. It's all right with that now. Um, yeah, okay, that's that's quite good. That is definitely it's a lot more intuitive than you'd want it to be. So based on that, uh, anything in here, uh, clefts, key signatures, these should, these should be easy to put in uh, brackets. Accidentals, oh nice, decent amount of options, ornamentations, something I'll never use. <laughs> Refs, pauses, grace notes, okay, note heads. So again, uh, should how would this work? Should I? Okay, so I can't. I'd, I'd have to actually have something selected. I'm just testing how this works. So yeah, okay, so I can just change the note head, which is nice. Nice touch. Nice touch. Okay, it's so nice and easy. Uh, lines. So I would assume, again, if I wanted a trill on this, I would go down here. Yeah, put a trill on there. Looks nice. Definitely looks nice. Uh, easy to delete. Uh, if I wanted a hairpin, not that you... Um, so if I do that, and will I get... Yeah, I'll get a hairpin over the whole thing, which is nice. Oh, sorry, you can't see. So, yep, yeah, quite effective. Maybe click and drag in order to... Oh, try that. Nope, bastard. Yeah, okay, cool. That's nice. Nice touch. Nice touch. Not entirely sure how I, you know, you can see that these are, there's there's connect points. So the, the hairpin is tied to this point here. The hairpin is tied to this point here. Uh, once I've put it in, it'd be nice if I could work out a way. Ah, okay, so just, yeah, all right. It's just connecting to information. That's fine. Okay, that's a nice touch. Okay, so lines, pretty easy, pretty uh, pretty intuitive. Bar lines, they'll be intuitive. Arpeggios and Glissandi, that'll be intuitive. Tremolos should be very intuitive. Yeah, and then my text, tempo. So, of course, I haven't put tempo in yet. Should be, uh, tempo should be 140. So if I do this, and then should just be able to click 140. I should be able to put that you know, wherever I want that to display, um, maybe there. Okay. 
Okay, we've got our information. Score style uncheck enable indentation on the first. Uh, oh, score. Nope. Score. St where is score? <laughs> I want to say there'll be something in preferences, surely. <laughs> well, this is cool. Okay. Input. Here we go. Beautiful. Very nice. All the options you could possibly want. Shortcuts. Yeah, fucking beauty. There we go. So I can go in here and I can I can put in the custom shortcuts for anything exactly how I want them to be. This, again, one of the biggest missing features in Guitar Pro is that you cannot customize shortcuts in the software. There are certain things that you need to do all the time in Guitar Pro that there's no shortcut for. And it's dumb that you can't program one in. It's nice that I can program program one in here, which is, um, is kind of cool. So uh, under preferences. So where's that? <laughs> So preferences, sweet. Score. Score, sweet. Uncheck enable indentation on the first system. No? <laughs> this must be frustrating you no amount yet for but i enjoy frustrating you buddy it's nice to it's nice, nice to annoy you i like that um cool okay in version 3.6 indent is in the style window all the way to the stop all the way to the top you know, so we're getting that but how the fuck do i access style where is this is that view Custom shortcut should absolutely be in every program. There's no possible justification for it. Uh, how the fuck can can I not find this style window? Yeah. <laughs> style, there we go. Format style, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, style window, all the way at the top in score. There is... <laughs> There's no, there's no score in here. <laughs> For, yeah, well, we're there, mate. Format style. I'm in style. Where the fuck is indentation? <laughs> oh, I like that. That has, I mean, I like that immediately. Scroll up. I am all, ah. <laughs> that, okay. That is the height of stupidity. Let's check that again. S Why when I opened that? I'm not crazy, right? When I, it was just page, right? I didn't have score there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> For sake. Okay, get rid of that indentation. Um. Okay, sweet. Oh, look, this is nice. Under swing, you can select the swing ratio. So if you want your stupid quintuple swing, you can do it. Okay. <laughs> right. So there we go. Um, that's, in essence, the piece. Uh, there is a repeat on it. So, and again, I should know how to do this now. So I should just be able to jump into bar lines. Oh, which is where bar lines there. Start repeat, end repeat and repeat should just be able to do that right i wonder if i click more if there's okay so there's no like multiplication uh information <laughs> yeah but you know what i mean it is great it is great i have to uh, props where props is due right this is great it is legitimately great it might be slow and it might not be quite as intuitive as i want it to be but for comparison's sake right uh hang on For comparison's sake, if I go, now, I don't want to say I'm not a believer in subscribing to software. I just don't like the idea. I would rather just own something. 
rather than subscribe to, to software, right? So, okay. Uh, no, wrong screen. There we go. So this is Sibelius. If I want to buy Sibelius... I saw it. Yeah, so Sibelius first is free, regular Sibelius, write music with up to 16 instruments, so for smaller ensembles. That's probably the, the thing that I would be going for, right? Um, price in British pounds, uh, 79 pounds is a year subscription, plus VAT on that, uh, or 120 pounds for a perpetual license, paid up front so when with this you won't get the um maybe not get updates and then of course there's there's all these add-ons like this is way made way more complicated than it than it needs to be uh this is the the, the you know like a limited version of the software that's 142 pounds if obviously if you're buying something like this you would want the proper version that has everything available in it and if i want this a perpetual license for this along with like photo score notate me you know all the things that you're going to likely want that can go all the way up to 749 pounds uh inclusive of that that's 900 pounds that's a lot of money <laughs> so when i compare that to muse score this is free <laughs> so i like that um good to see uh some love for jake in the comments so learning muse score was a pain enormously helpful you can export the score to SVG to how my graphics have your music very well. Let's be honest, Jake. <laughs> let me bring let me bring my face up. Let's be honest, mate. <laughs> I was going to say the most impressive thing about your videos are your animations. That's really unfair. Those aren't the most impressive thing about your animations. Let's put it this way: um, one of the things that you have on me, and the reason you have hundreds of thousands of subscribers and I have thirty six, is because you make a lot more effort in your videos than I do. Um, I, I deem this content just going on and trying to fuck around with a piece of software and learn how to use it. <laughs> I'm getting more help from everybody helping me in the comments than I am from, you know, you're a professional, I'm an amateur. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't know how to how to animate stuff. But um, yeah, I can totally see the, the, the benefits of this. And I think you're going to, of course, have a little bit more user functionality you know, out of Sibelius. But in the grand scheme of things, I just cannot see anything in the world justifying 800 pounds nothing is gonna gonna um justify that nothing at all <laughs> um yeah so i'm just reading these comments these are these are fun yeah i think that uh, jose makes a great point there like when you've already learned the interface and then customized all your shortcuts in that sense um this this should be great this sh absolutely should be great you know like it being being really fair here the the frustrations i'm having are that it does so many things you know that finding the thing that you want it to do is not as easy for me to do as i'd maybe like it to be and of course i'm basing that on my 10 15 years experience of using guitar pro so i've got a an expectation of where things should be and this is different so i'm not criticizing it for that that's it's 100 a me issue like I, I have to learn how how this stuff um how this stuff all works uh, but i genuinely really like this there's definitely a shit ton of potential in this um yeah if i if i'm just gonna toy around with a couple more things so uh let's get your face so um yeah i should just be able to drag notes like that you know if i don't like the spacing of things uh they are going to be connected to each other yeah i mean these are these are a little bit tight um oh no there we go just that is something you just can't simply can't you can't do that in in guitar pro just getting the notes to space the way you want them to so it looks a little bit more pleasing to your eyes and there's a compromise going on here you know the, the better i space these the more of a gap there is here i'm not crazy about that but it, let me be clear there's no way around that there's no way to fight that like that's the way it should happen so <laughs> um yeah so um jake uh, this is just me begging 
collab again soon do you want to do something together because i could really do with some more subscribers that would be fantastic thank you very much <laughs> can i please piggyback off of your success that would be that would be really helpful to me thank you and i know how how much you like helping people speaking of helping people you'll see jake's name on here of course because jake is a long time supporter of the channel and it's very much appreciated thank you very much to all of my wonderful supporters over on patreon link is in the description i will be uploading this um transcription it's not a transcription but this oak research lab uh sound thing uh to patreon after this stream so please do go uh over there that'll be up for my transcription challenge guys so um go and check it out uh that's all very much appreciated love your kindness generosity and support thank you very much there's jake's name thank you jake um you you absolutely rock and yeah let's do it any ideas man i'm always here <laughs> uh, always got things that i want to do no hang on let me rephrase that i'm always capable of doing things let's put it that way <laughs> we had talked in the past of doing some melodic minor stuff and guess what i'm mr melodic minor that's me <laughs> um right so uh the minor differences in spacing would drive me insane yeah <laughs> but one two let's be super clear about this um having it as an option and not doing it is so much better than guitar pro where you don't even have it as an option if i just do a, a comparison to guitar pro if i just open up something in guitar pro right so um okay so this is a transcription that i've done for elevated um the youtube uh, jam track channel elevated uh so when i go in in this and i bring up design mode this is the limit <laughs> this is all you can do <laughs> you know your notes are, are either how they want them to be or they're not how they want them to be if i wanted to put a bit more space between these two notes here there's no way for me to do that i should be able to click that and just drag it but i can't and and that not legitimately that really annoys me um there are other examples when i'm doing transcriptions where like here where you bend like i just need to stretch these out so it's a little bit clearer so you can see what's going on and if you want to see something really ridiculous check this out look. <laughs> right so this is one grace note five slide into seven if there were two grace notes here so maybe five slide into six slide into seven five slide into six slide into seven well okay that's i want to say this reasonable it's not look at the distance between these two notes looks awful <laughs> beyond awful um but let's let's say there was another one in here there was a four in here as well so we're going four slide into five slide into six slide into seven like this is embarrassing me by not looking as bad as it possibly could now uh, i think it's probably because that note is there oh don't you make an ass out of me now yeah okay so the grace notes will never condense See that? They'll always stay the same distance. So even when you condense the rest of the bar, the grace notes will just go over the top of the notes and it just looks... It looks stupid. So in order to have this display correctly, I would have to have the bar about that wide. So then it's like, okay, well, the bar, it has to be about that wide in order to make that work. And, and you should just have the option to do what I can do here. <laughs> That would that would be good. So, <laughs> uh, Peter's telling me to check the. You better not be a dick pic. <laughs> I don't know if you legitimately meant check DMs. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Oh god. <laughs> I mean, I won't play this, but. I know this isn't a dick pic, but there's very definitely pictures. There's videos of you with you not wearing a top, mate. So that's um, that's harrowing. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> Musical will do tab, yeah. I'm sure. Um, sure, Musical will, will do tab. There's no doubt in my mind it will it'll do tab. That'll be something I'll come on to. Don't worry about that. As I you know toy around with the software and get more familiar with it. Right, I'm going to save this. Uh, so I want to save it in there. Yeah, sure. Uh, now I should be able to print this as a PDF. Let's try this. So I don't want to save it there. Let's uh, put it here. Uh, no, it won't go there. We'll go on my Patreon folder because this will go for patrons to download. So uh, Oak Research Lab. You know, let's call it Pokemon. Now I won't lose it. <laughs> Um, okay, right, so oh, I see what you mean now, Peter, because you, you're talking about having a, a 
guitar souls um thing so just add tab as an instrument when you're selecting guitar yeah same as as when you're doing it in sibelius like that that totally makes sense um yeah uh though interestingly if i go down in here there's fretboards and diagrams so i could put chords and things in there which is nice repeats and jumps yeah you know reasonably intuitive reasonably intuitive that it's only a tiny few things in here that that um you know jump jump out at me as being like oh why would you do it that way but yeah i like it i do like it so um yeah finally just one last reminder this is a plea actually more so than anything so i did this because i wanted to do the take a look at this book i want to talk to you about this book it's a fucking cool book and it breaks my heart that more books like this don't exist legitimately breaks my heart that more books like this don't exist because video games have always had great soundtracks you know if you look at the old nintendo games the mega man games the soundtrack to mega man or the soundtrack to um sonic the hedgehog or the soundtrack to street fighter um it breaks my heart that at some point in the last th almost 30 years with games like that that nobody made official books piano books for things like street fighter because when you look at like ken's theme or guile's theme from street fighter 2 they are just wonderful wonderful compositions that could be played on the piano okay now don't get me wrong i know what you're going to say you're going to say well levi most tons of people have done these arrangements anyway and you can just download their scores for free yes that is absolutely true but if this if this doesn't tell you something about me it's that i like to spend money to have physical things that were officially released because the composer will have been paid for this and that's very different to seeing someone who did a youtube video and then just downloading the score that they made right this is a lovely collector's piece i can go and learn these pieces myself if i want to anyway but this is a nice collector's piece so what i'm asking you is are you aware of any other books any other things like this that you think are quite cool i've got most of the final fantasy books already uh it just seems to be an extremely limited thing there's there's just nowhere near as many things as you would want them to be and if they exist i know how i can find them now i can go and find these things in japan right it might not be the cheapest thing in the world to get them sent here but i can get them if i really want them so i would be fascinated to see if there are more uh official video game scores for things that i'm not already aware of so that that's what i would say all right jake i will check the email we will talk soon mate and uh yeah thanks for thanks for uh thanks for jumping in and um giving us some input on stuff uh as i always say regularly saying uh jake's channel is infinitely better than mine so if you're unfamiliar with signals music studio please do go and check him out please do go and subscribe to jake's channel he is fantastic uh he makes incredible content i like legitimately just very very good content and um i'm not going to say he deserves more subscribers because he doesn't he's got tons of subscribers he's got more than me he's got many more than me but it's for a good reason so if you're unfamiliar with his channel go and check him out you'll probably find something you'll enjoy talented gentleman so uh i'd make my own feel sell a book full of other people's music with me. yeah you're absolutely right peter it, it would it, that and that's the issue like i know there's some great arrangements of like what i really want is something like the overcooked soundtrack the soundtrack to overcook is great fun and I'm sure that if you listen to that, mate, you would have great arrangements of it in 10 minutes flat. But what I want is to buy a book of it where the composer of the music got paid. That would be cool to me. I just bought the Stardew Valley book and the, uh, and I've not even played Stardew Valley. I bought the Undertale book. I did play Undertale, but I didn't pay attention to any of the music when I played it. And I just got the Celeste book. Um, I played that and loved the music in that. Uh, because even if I can't play these things, I just want, I like, I, I've always understood that, this industry that we are in that i'm in probably more so than some of you guys some of you guys would not consider yourselves in the industry but this is the industry that we're all passionate about we love the music industry right um the only way that it goes round is by economic stimulation you have to you know you can't love an industry and not put money into that industry i love the music industry and i love the the printed music side of the industry and the I love transcriptions and official products and things like that because they like, I wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for stuff like this. So I love spending money in stuff like this. <laughs> there is an official Pokemon book, but it again, it's 1998, so it's been kicking around for like what, 23 years? A long long old time. Um 
yeah so i love the industry and for that reason i want to put money into it as well as make money from it um so yeah while i would be happy peter in fact i've learned some of the the music from overcooked um i don't know why i keep picking overcooked it's one of my favorite games at the moment it's great fun um while i'd be happy uh to check out your arrangements of you playing things like that like i just want them to to release books near does have a book one two yeah i can confirm that uh yeah so what's my transcription price told me once but i've forgotten this 80s uh panasonic commercial i'm struggling to pick up it's 22 pounds per minute of audio dave as it currently stands i'm not taking any transcriptions on i've got uh, a project for fundamental changes on the go i've got an album that i need to do for someone and then i've promised myself that i will take a month off so i can write another book uh, and after that i know i've got to go back and do kiko Lorero's second album so i've got a bunch of stuff coming up i've also got the new monument single that needs to be done so i've got a bunch of official projects plus my own book that needs to be done uh sh tiny short little things i might be able to fit in here and there but generally speaking I'm, my books are, are closed for for a couple of months um which i'll probably end up regretting when i you know going through a divorce and <laughs> uh, money is is helpful right now um but yeah so anyway guys um thank you so much for tuning in i am going to i'm going to head now um like i say i'll put this little transcription up on patreon so if you want to take a look at it if you want to um criticize it comment on it any of that stuff um let me know that's that's cool uh okay so final question opinion on muse score i have used muse score now for an hour and a bit right i like it i really like it i legitimately really like it i'm intimidated by it would be the best way of putting it because there are it's so granular compared to guitar pro in terms of what it's capable of doing but there was a time there was absolutely a time where guitar pro would have been very intimidating for me as well where i would have looked at it and gone jesus i don't know how i'm going to go about doing all the things i need to do and i just know how that software works inside and out now so there's no doubt in my mind that if i put the time into muse score i can become just as proficient in it and have the inner workings of how it works i often get um links sorry i'll give you a link to the discord um i often get where's my discord there we go hang on it's coming I often get people sending me emails like just asking like oh levi you're a you're an expert in guitar pro like how do i do this thing and i don't need to be at the software to know exactly how to how to do the thing that it that it is that they want to do or that they need to do um so yeah and i i can totally get that with with this it will just take a bit of time so um yeah opinions on music score i like it it's got a lot of potential and in terms of what i'm needing which is to notate piano stuff right now i'm doing this i'm using muse score because guitar pro would never even come close to cutting the mustard for being able to notate stuff in it um on piano it's just dire for something like that it's one well i'm not even gonna say wonderful okay it's almost passable for guitar fucking dire for anything else uh and for that i needed to be more proficient in something like music score so i do like it um and i will be using it more i'm going to be doing a, a stream at the end of the month actually where i actually transcribe let me bring it up for you so at the end of the month i've not <laughs> I should probably give these spoilers right at the end of the month i'm going to be transcribing some of this stuff because this is cool and i want when i'm doing this i want you to understand how going about and transcribing stuff like this is nowhere near as difficult as maybe you think it is how it's a wonderful ear training exercise to be transcribing things like this and how you can and, and a voice leading exercise as well so we're going to go through this we will look at things like that we'll probably do the battle this
is nowhere near as difficult to transcribe as you might think it is. <laughs> Let's pick one more thing, right? Uh, Stuff like that. I'm going to be transcribing a bunch of that stuff at the end of the month. I'm going to use MuseScore to do that because it would be infinitely more logical for me to do that in MuseScore than it would be to do it anywhere else. So, um, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I wouldn't even come close to saying that as far as video game soundtracks go, this is nowhere near as good as some of the greats. Are there some cool stuff on here? I mean, to be fair, it's working within the limitation of the Game Boy sound chip. Like, <laughs> how much can it really do? Um, but there is some nice ear training exercises that you can work on in here, so that um, yeah, doesn't stuff doesn't get lost in the mix. Absolutely, uh, Chrono Trigger soundtrack. I have the book for the Chrono Trigger soundtrack. I do have the book for the Chrono Trigger soundtrack. I never played Minecraft, Peter, because um, because I'm 32 years old. <laughs> Jesus, I'm old. Death will soon be with me, and I cannot wait for the eternal sleep. <laughs> right. Lastly promised last time thank you so much to all my wonderful supporters over on patreon um if you are able to support me over there for as little as one dollar it is a big help so please do consider heading over on over to the link in the description and sending me a dollar um for all the love and work that i put in i want to say all the work that i put in but you guys are really putting in the work on this one i'm just i'm learning and doing it on a thing yeah so <laughs> when it comes to the final fantasy stuff minus seven sharp five i have all the books already uh maybe maybe i'll do some transcriptions of that stuff that'll be cool um anyway so uh if that doesn't suit please do check out one of my books all available on, on amazon they keep the lights on in my studio they keep my house from not being repossessed they keep me not being homeless so um if you're able to support me uh it's very much appreciated thank you so much for all your love kindness and support guys it means a lot uh, i have enjoyed this evening i hope you have enjoyed yourself i will see you for another stream very soon much love look after yourselves Look after your families, be nice to one another, and expect a Guitar Souls episode on Monday. It's coming. You know it's coming. Goodbye.